So you, you want to know what sends a shiver up the spines of most Americans? <laughs> April 15th, tax time. Yeah, and the Eternal Revenue Service has announced that nine out of ten refunds this year should be issued in less than three weeks. And the average refund will be about $3,000. And that's good. But if you haven't yet filed your tax return, it's now crunch time. That last minute sprint to the finish, though, can sometimes lead to costly mistakes. Experts say make sure that you choose your filing status wisely. For instance, filing as single instead of head of household does make a difference. Experts say using the wrong status could result in a rejected return or a delayed refund. Also, you want to be careful with any math errors. If you underpay the IRS, you'll be responsible for whatever you owe along with interest. Experts say if you're not ready to file your return, make sure that you at least file the appropriate paperwork. Interest starts accumulating after April 15th, whether an extension is filed or not. And finally, withholding too much may not be the best idea. It's great to get a hefty refund, but imagine having a little extra money in your paycheck throughout the entire year. Now, if you need to adjust your withholding, all you have to do is revise a new W-4 form with your employer. It's that easy. So once you have everything in order, what if you try to file, file your taxes and find out someone else already has? It's just one way criminals are trying to get their hands on your money. And the scams are keeping authorities busy. In fiscal year 2012, the IRS initiated almost 900 identity theft-related criminal investigations, tripling the number of investigations initiated in fiscal year 2011. Sentences handed down for convictions relating to identity theft have been ranging from four months to 25 years. Now, as we mentioned, you have less than two weeks to file your tax return, but experts say identity thieves won't wait that long. They're going to file a false return with a, with a legitimate social security number and then claim a refund. And before the IRS can catch that, those refunds have been deposited into accounts or checks have been cut. And then the thieves are off and on to their next adventure. Those adventures have led to a 66% increase in refund fraud that involves identity thieves filing false claims for refunds by stealing and using someone's social security number. The mishandling of documents is one way for thieves to get your information, and old tax returns in particular, rich with personal data. Your social security numbers, your current address, full names, of course your income levels, which is sometimes used as, a, as an identity verification tool. Depending on the way your taxes are filed, the IRS recommends keeping documents anywhere from three to seven years, and you need to store them somewhere secure, like a file cabinet with a lock. When you're ready to get rid of them, shredding is the best way to ensure your identity is protected. But documents aren't the only way thieves are filing on your behalf. If anybody's asking for personal information over the phone, I think that's a a key indicator. Thieves are using phone and email scams, posing as the IRS. They persuade their victims to give out information, but Milligan says the IRS will never contact you through the phone or email and encourages anyone to call and ask a professional before giving out personal data. Don't act upon something without checking it out with someone else. Get some third-party verification. If you think you are a victim of tax fraud theft, CPAs recommend seeking help from a professional tax service. And the IRS says if you do experience stolen identity, you'll need to contact the IRS Identity Protection Unit immediately, fill out an affidavit, and send proof of your identity. So what we have to do at that point is sort out who is the real owner of this name and this social security number, um, and who is the rightful person that should get the refund. So fake emails like this one called phishing are also popping up more, and uh, Boone says that if you get something like this, Ignore it. Mm. Now, while we're talking about money, yeah. did you get yours? That letter in the mail, including the check that says, you won, only thing you have to do is wire back to them the taxes and fees and the money is yours. Not so fast. The Federal Trade Commission, the nation's consumer protection agency, wants you to know that counterfeit check scams are on the rise and some fake checks look so real that bank tellers are reporting being fooled. Scammers have been known to target babies, dead people, and now dogs. But this case only further illustrates how easy the fake check scam is to spot and avoid. 
It was so transparent that even Walter figured it out immediately. Meet attorney Mark Goldman's law partner, Walter Goldman. Not really. It's all for fun. But the Bull Terrier's picture is all over the company's website, and he even has an honorary law degree. He has an email address at the law firm, and he received an email from a gentleman who claimed to be in England. The man wanted to hire Walter to collect money from a deadbeat. Just to see what would happen, Walter agreed and asked for a retainer. Instead, he got this $198,000 check in the mail from the so-called deadbeat, asking him to deposit the check, take his fee, and wire the rest to the creditor to settle the debt. Goldman says lawyers are frequent targets of this ruse. Lawyers are targeted in particular because lawyers have an obligation to deliver proceeds of any settlement checks to the client. Scammers couldn't trick Walter, but they succeed with many people thanks to a loophole in a federal banking law. The Expedited Funds Availability Act, which means that funds are available before checks actually clear the bank. If Walter had wired the money when the funds were available, he wouldn't know for two weeks that the check was bad. Then he'd have to pay the bank back every penny. These law partners foiled this scam. Walter handled it uh, appropriately and according to the policy of our law firm and what any individual or business should do. So, what can you do to be as smart as Walter? Well, here's what the Federal Trade Commission says you should do throw away any offer that asks you to pay for a prize or a gift. If it's free or a gift, you shouldn't have to pay for it. Free is free. Resist the urge to enter foreign lotteries. It's illegal to play a foreign lottery through the mail or the telephone, and most foreign lottery solicitations are phony. Know who you're dealing with and never wire money to strangers. And if you're selling something, don't accept a check for more than the selling price, no matter how tempting the offer or how convincing the story. And if the buyer refuses to send the correct amount, return the check, don't send the merchandise. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now as a seller, you can suggest an alternative way for the buyer to pay, like an escrow service or online payment service. Now, if the buyer insists on using a particular escrow or online payment service that you've never heard of, check it out. If you accept payment by check, ask for a check drawn on a local bank or a bank with a local branch. That way you can make a personal visit just to make sure that that check's valid. If the buyer insists that you wire back funds, end that transaction immediately. Legitimate buyers don't pressure you to send money by wire transfer services. And the Federal Trade Commission says you should resist any pressure to act now. If the buyer's offer is good now, it should be good after the check clears. Listen, if Walter can figure all this out, so can you. <laughs> what an unbelievable That's story. Crazy. And you know where else you can see some pretty unbelievable stories? Daytime drama. Still ahead on Delmarva Life for 41 years, the stories coming out of Genoa City have been captivating TV audiences around the world. And this year, The Young and the Restless is celebrating a pretty impressive milestone. We'll tell you what it is. Plus, we're going to break down some numbers. Like, how many times has Victor Newman been married? Uh, that answer is next. But first, we want you to be a part of our studio audience. It will be a great time you'll talk about for a while. If you'd like to book your seat, visit themarvelife.com and click on the show tab. It's right on the right side of the page. It's the ticket tab. Look under for our audience. Or you just give us a call. It's that easy. 443-880-9116. Delmarva Life. We'll be right back. <laughs> 